So, I have a question. Behind me stands one of the pillars of the black community on the city south side. Enshrined inside these very walls is the legacy of a black woman who molded this very building into one of the most respected literary spaces in the country. She was the consummate connector, providing opportunities for countless black intelligentsia to commune and spread their knowledge amongst the community. Giants sailed through its doors, promoting their works, exchanging ideas on activism and culture, and elevating Bronzeville as the mecca for blackness. A no-nonsense kind of woman, she stood no taller than 5'3 on a good day, and had a stern manner that could send grown men running for cover. Yes, with a blunt cut bob and impeccable style that would put Anna Wintour to shame, Vivian G. Harsh served as the mother to the black literary movement for over 60 years as the inaugural branch librarian for the iconic George C. Hall Library, along with being the first African-American librarian in Chicago, period. She committed her entire life to the preservation of black artists and education. As a result of her tireless efforts, the collection she so painstakingly developed is now the largest in the Midwest, with over 70,000 commissions filed through the Chicago Public Library. But behind the coiffed hair and trend-setting fashions, who really was Vivian G. Harsh? What drove her dedication and fire to highlight those around her, not concerned with any glory for herself? And now more than ever, why is her legacy a blueprint for us to follow? Come along with me as I peel back the life of this fascinating woman and why her legacy is one that must be shared. Vivian Gordon Harsh was born May 27, 1890 in Chicago, Illinois, to Fenton and Maria Harsh. Her parents were a part of the Old Settlers, a distinguished group of African Americans with the longest roots in Chicago, which basically made them the OGs of the city. Vivian's parents were some of the first graduates of Fisk University, so higher education was an expectation set for Vivian and her brother early on in life, as her family ran in the highest circles of black society. In her heyday, she was known as a socialite and appeared in many society columns, highlighting her goings on around the city. Basically, Vivian was bad. Upon graduating Wendell Phillips, Vivian entered the workforce as a clerk for the Chicago Public Library in 1909 and remained affiliated with the organization until her retirement in 1958. At a time where women were expected to bake bread or birth babies, she was a renaissance woman onto herself, choosing neither role. Vivian quickly began advocating for more literary works by black writers. She found her efforts, however, unsupported by Chicago Public Library administrators, but she didn't let their resistance deter her. Financially supported by private funders, including the iconic Dr. Charles E. Bentley, who donated over 200 books from his own personal collection. Spurred on, Vivian crisscrossed the country in rapid fire, amassing books and articles by the top up-and-coming literary minds of the age. She was the epitome of put up or shut up. Chicago was changing and fast, and the population that once only held 5% of the city's black demographic was dramatically increasing. Originally known as the Black Belt, from the select few upwardly mobile African Americans who made up the population of old, sprang forth a surge of urban development in the city. Suddenly, there was a vast mix of various socioeconomic families, all confined to the narrow strip that led from 22nd to 55th, between State Street to Cottage Grove by racist laws. But from that confinement created a cultural exchange that needed to be nurtured. Vivian G. Harsh was a woman of vision and served to be that nurturer for the growing numbers of African Americans beginning to migrate from the South to the South Side. Manning down a helm of all women librarians, she was known for demanding excellence and being a perfectionist. Whereas some might have thought this caused her not to be as personable, she never once lost focus. In a world that time and time again demonstrated their resistance to women, especially black women in positions of power, what other option did she really have at the end of the day? From her tireless efforts, the George C. Hall branch served to be the pinnacle for black creative thought. 
The most enduring program she created was the Book Review and Lecture Forum, commonly known as the BRLF, a semi-monthly event designed to bring library patrons together. Using featured speakers' topics ranging from Black history, literature, and current events. What made this forum so revolutionary was that Vivian encouraged all aspects of Blackness to attend and didn't limit it to the elite social class. Literary pillars of our community, such as Gwendolyn Brooks, Langston Hughes, Zola Neal Hurston, Margaret Walker, Arnabon Temps, Richard Wright, and many others came to speak on their bodies of work to the masses, along with donating their writings to the library. Can you imagine walking in and Langston Hughes is discussing the Blue Sea or Margaret Walker is casually doing research for the iconic For My People? With a personal life so private she'd give Beyonce a run for her money, there's very little on her once she entered the public sector. This woman was defined by so much more than her home life though. After serving as branch librarian for over 56 years, Harsh retired in 1958 after facing complications from a long-standing illness and depression. Even through her trials, she soldiered on, serving on countless committees and organizations dedicated to furthering the culture of her people. She died shortly after her retirement on August 17, 1960, and received a send-off fit for the queen that she was. Her legacy is poignant, especially today, because from the onset, Vivian G. Harsh's entire life positioned her at the core of Black aristocracy, where she could have easily stepped into the life of grandeur and comfort that had been put before her. However, she had the burning desire to impart knowledge to others and centered herself around the education and unification of the Bronzeville community. She chose to be the keeper of our tales, our pride, our laughter, to bring to the forefront those who wanted to express the mundane to the exemplary that is the Black experience. And she sought to demonstrate the commonality of Blackness, no matter our economic station. Now as our city and countless others across the nation continue to be ravaged by racism, classism, and a global pandemic, her life is a testimony as to the importance of unification from all levels of the community and not finger pointing and disgust due to a lack of pedigree. Trying times serve to either expose where we are lacking as a society and whether we'll rise above the tide. Are you serving as an educator, a protector, an amplifier? Let's all take note from the testimony that is Vivian G. Harsh. Let us all celebrate her by coming together.